season, Mother Nature offers our palate a new selection of food and flavors to savor. Here in the Simply Luxurious Kitchen, discover simple ways to dance effortlessly with each season and enjoy stepping into your kitchen, knowing no matter what you find at the market. stocked epicerie, you can make a delicious meal in the middle of the work week or to share with family and friends on a weekend. Let's get started. Welcome to the Simply Luxurious Kitchen and today for me when I get home from work I often am exhausted in a very good way, but mentally I'm exhausted and I want a good meal, but I don't want to have to make a complicated meal. So today what we're going to be doing is cooking one of my favorites with salmon, and we're also going to be putting it on top of some French, uh, French lentils, and then we have to have dessert. I mean, especially on those days, you want something sweet at the end, just enjoy with a cup of tea, but you don't want to have a ton of sugar, just really good flavor, this is my go-to, very, very simple, apple tart. All right, so we're gonna get started with the lentils because they're gonna take about 20, 25 minutes to simmer. But I wanna flavor them first. So what I have here is what was available to me in my kitchen when I got home. I did not go to the grocery store. I looked in here and I said, what do you have to flavor? And I had shallots. I did not have onions. You could easily put onions in here. And that's the one thing I wanna to try to uh, inspire you or encourage you to do is look around and see what you do have because you might be surprised at what you have could actually work just as well if not better than what the recipe calls for so in this case I want to add that subtle onion flavor with the shallot there you're gonna get obviously softer flavor with a shallot versus that onion so I'm just slicing up my shallot it doesn't have to be too fine because it's gonna be simmering okay and I've turned on my pan to about medium heat, medium low. It's about a four on the ten, or a scale of a 10, okay? So I'm just gonna put some olive oil, not a lot. All right, and you want a large flat skillet, okay? Oops, I have a few more that needs to be sliced up. But again, if you have an onion, go for it, all right? And lentils are something that provide a lot of protein. I know we're gonna be putting protein with it with our salmon, um, but they provide a lot of protein and they can be enjoyed on their own as well. We um, will make them with a bunch of different vegetables, not a bunch of different, just two, shallots and carrots. All right. So you just want these to get nearly translucent. It's about three to four minutes. And while we're waiting for that, I'm going to measure out our lentils. There are a bunch of different lentils. These are French lentils. Okay. And we're going to do a half a cup. Half a cup's a good, healthy one portion, maybe two small portions. All right. And um, usually I'll take my dinner the night before and I'll take it to lunch the next day at work. So I have my lentils, okay. I have two and a half cups of water, which will go on top of those lentils once we add them. Oh, we're almost done. All right, these are ready. So what we're gonna do is add our water, add our lentils. We're gonna bring this to a boil, okay out of the way. We're also going to add a good helping of salt. And this is coarse sea salt. This is fine sea salt for something else we're going to do next. 
And while that's coming to a boil, we're going to cut, we're going to cut about three carrots, okay? And you want them as small as you want to eat them. So I like to cut mine in half so that they're easier to chop, partly. And you've already, I've already peeled them here. That's up to you as well. All right. Let's break them so they're sitting flat. And now we'll chop them. I like them a, a small dice. I like them too. Obviously, it's really going to be really hard for some people, for me, <laughs> anyway, to get them as small as the lentils. The lentils are obviously going to puff up a little bit. But um, you want to try to get them almost equal size as that. So we'll start like this. distributed. Now, perfect. I'm going to cover that and simmer it over here because we're going to need to use the stove. So that's going to simmer for about 20 minutes. We'll see what it looks like after that. All right, so now we're gonna get ready to make our salmon. And I'm gonna turn on a cast iron skillet. You want some kind of skillet where you can grab a handle, and obviously I'll put a uh, hot pad on this, that it can go in the oven, so it's oven safe. So I'm gonna put this um, at about a medium to medium high heat. All right, and while we're getting um, that heated up, we wanna make the, the moisture that's gonna go on top of the salmon to keep the moisture in while it's cooking, okay? So I put about a tablespoon per salmon filet of mayonnaise. I take a little bit of Dijon mustard, about a teaspoon per, per uh, salmon filet. Come on off. There we go. And the Dijon that you choose is up to you. You're going to definitely taste it. Um, so definitely take, choose something like wine that you really like to eat. Okay. All right. I'm going to add a little bit of salt about a quarter of a teaspoon okay and even some pepper just one little gob mix that up okay so it's not a lot we're just barely going to dress the top of it and then oops we're going to slice some fresh parsley italian parsley this has been sitting in a counter waiting for me to get prepared. And so it's a little bit bloop, but it is from the market today, I promise. Okay. Just a nice rough chop. See the steam is starting to come up off of that. But we want this skillet nice and hot before we put those salmon in. I'll explain why in a second. Now, we're gonna to top the salmon a little bit of panko. And panko is simply um, dried, uh, this is just Japanese breadcrumbs. I like them better than regular breadcrumbs. Um, you can make your own obviously because they're finer um, and they just crisp up really nicely, but it's up to you. You could put regular breadcrumbs, that's fine. Okay. I 
would say about three tablespoons per a salmon filet. And then you're also going to put some lemon zest for that citrus finish. Okay. So right into the mixture of the not mixture yet. It will be a mixture as soon as we're done. <laughs> But again, this is another example of seasoning. Citrus, lemon, lime, another great, other great ways, just very simple, that add that extra layer of flavor. And then you're adding the herbs in this case. Okay. Oof, I can smell that lemon. Oh. And I just use my hands to mix that up. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil so it comes together. And it's really just a I'm eyeballing of it. Because okay. you're just making the crumble a little bit more. Okay. Again, I'm making two fillets. Probably about a tablespoon of olive oil for two fillets. Perfect. See how we got a little bit of lemon, the yellow, a little bit of the green, and then the bread comes. Now, we're going to dress our salmon. So I want to first cut them into a filet. And I always usually choose either um, uh, sockeye salmon, which is what this is, king salmon, which is for very special occasions. It's delicious and nice and plump and fatty and ugh. Um, you want to make sure all the bones are out, and I did that before. Um, an easy way to do that is to place it over around at the bottom of a round um, mixing bowl. So for example, like this. You can just flop it over, you would have the whole filet, and those things will just pop out, and you can use tweezers or your fingers and just take them out. Okay? I'll clean out later. <laughs> so now I like to add even more seasoning to just the filet itself. So salt, again, coarse sea salt, pepper. The pan is about hot as we need it to be, I can smell it. Now we put a thin layer, whoop, come back here you little stinker, thin layer of that mayo and Dijon mixture. You can put thick, I guess. I mean, I guess I've done that too. I mean, it really just depends on what you feel like. What this does is two things. It's going to seal in flavor on the top half. Okay, we're going to seal in flavor in a second on the bottom half. I sear it in it. And it also allows the crumble to stick. This is like frosting a cake, except for it's salmon. I love it. <laughs> and again, it's that and one more layer of flavor. All right. The easiest way to do this, it depends on what you want to do. If you don't mind being splattered, it's easier to do it and it's in the pan. But we're not going to get splattered today. So we're just going to take this and the board's going to get nice and crumbly, which is fantastic. Yeah. You know, let's pick up the extras husk. He's right here. I don't know if you can see him. So just put him on, just like that. Yeah. Now, this is actually um, vegetable oil. Um, you can use canola oil if you'd like. You want an oil that can handle a high heat um, tolerance. And so we're going to put them right in here for just two to three minutes to sear in the flavor. They're not gonna get cooked all the way through. I'm gonna put my oven at 425. Okay? And as soon as they're done cooking in that oil, we're gonna pop them in the oven for five to seven minutes. Now I wanna give my oven a second to heat up and then we'll get started here. All right guys, so the oven is warmed up, so we're gonna cook a salmon, sear it, just sear it for two to three minutes. Now it's gonna spark and pop a little bit, so just hang in there with me. Now I've got a thin layer of that oil. It's not just um, a drizzle. It's a good half a cup of oil. I'll show you. All right, two minutes, and then it'll go in the oven for seven to eight minutes. Literally seven to eight, and it's, it'll be ready to eat. You still want it nice and tender in the middle. You want it cooked, but you don't want it solid through, and this will be that nice and juicy, not juicy, but it has a lot of moisture and it's very tender still. <laughs> I'm going to check on our lentils. It's been about 20, 25 minutes. 
and they're getting there. They're soaking up that moisture. I'll show you a few. All right, so I'm gonna a little bit put a little dough here. I mean, a little dough, a little flour here. Okay. There she is. I also like to put down a little bit of sugar too. Because this is a sweet tart, okay? We're just gonna roll it out flat. Nothing fancy. This is gonna be a very rustic apple tart, a very simple apple tart. This is not gonna be anything you're gonna have to worry about crumping or crimping. Whoop, come on, it is gonna be nice and buttery and oh, it's gonna be so good. So don't worry about the roundness. You just wanna get it thin enough that you can get the crispiness out. And I put a lot of butter in this one. <laughs> I was excited. <laughs> so I put, what I do is I put a half a cup of butter and then a cup of flour. This is gonna be a nice and crispy crumbly tart. to put, out, put a tart on parchment, just like that, all right? Now this is definitely a rustic tart. So this tart is perfect for two people or one person for two servings. And so what I've done is I've peeled and quartered an apple. A few more peelings to go here and Choose whatever apple you like. Um, you're gonna be cutting them so that they look like apples. You're gonna cut them lengthwise, very thin. But if you like really tart apples, choose really tart apples. You want great baking apples? Choose great baking apples, Granny Smith's, okay? It's up to you. Um, often I use about an apple per tart, um, but sometimes I need a little bit more, and then the rest I just use as a snack. <laughs> <laughs> it works well that way. So we'll do a, a full apple and a quarter and the rest will be my snack for the afternoon tomorrow. All right. Okay. So now you're just going to cut them lengthwise, nice narrow peels or nice narrow cuts. Ooh, my lentils are about done. The easiest way to make sure you cut them thin and straight is to hold them together until you're done entirely. There we go. It's okay if they get a little flour on them. They're going on top of the dough. however you would like. You could just fan them out from right where you have them. Lay them slightly on top of each other. It's up to you how close you want to go. All right. I usually go lengthwise, but it really doesn't matter. If you want to go horizontally across, go for it. This is your tart in the middle of the week. It's been a great, or in the weekend, whenever your busy day was. It's so simple that you don't want to have to think about it. And that's all there is to it, right there. Now, we're gonna put a little bit of sugar on top. I like to put a little bit of brown sugar, maybe a tablespoon of brown sugar. And that is it. That is it. I'm gonna have a little dough because why not? And that will go in the oven as soon as my salmon comes out. So I heard that go off. So now I'm going to reduce the oven to 400 for the tart. 
hot pad on this one. That pan is going to be so hot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Woo! Hearts going in. Okay, that's still going to be hot. So I'm going to leave this out so I remind myself to not touch it with my bare hands. Okay, so this is not entirely done yet. What we want to add to it is a little bit of a dressing. And the simplest thing to do is to just use the vinaigrette that you love. And this is my vinaigrette. I do um, olive oil and balsamic. And you want to add, ooh, come on out, about two tablespoons. Okay. You're also going to add a little bit of Dijon mustard. Yes, yes, yes. All right. About a good tablespoon. And we're doing creme fraiche because why not do creme fraiche? You do not have to do creme fraiche. I have about three tablespoons of creme fraiche. Okay, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and mix that up. Oh, yeah. The creaminess of the creme fraiche is what it's going to add. It's going to make it a little bit creamier to that effect, for that effect and for that taste. The flavor is going to come from the vinaigrette and the Dijon and from the aromatics from the shallot and then the sweetness, the subtle, soft sweetness of the carrots. There we go, guys. So done. All right. Now let's dress this up. So I want the salmon to drain a little bit of that oil it's been cooking in. So we're just going to put them on a paper towel. Not for too long because you want them warm still. Okay. okay. Clean this up and I'll be right back. All right. So let's dish these up. All right. So we have our lentils. And again, enough for two servings about. I like to make a bed of them. Okay, kind of lay it out there. There we go. Spatula. Perfect. Voila. Something very simple and very delicious. You have your proteins and you have a fish that has is full of health benefits. That's the thing about knowing where you live and what's available to you. Here in Oregon, I eat salmon quite often. Um, like I was mentioning before, this is sockeye salmon and it's, you, you don't even have to do it this fancy and you could just put salt and pepper, a little bit of butter and pan fry it and it's good to go once you've cooked it for about five minutes on the stove you're done. Um, so it, it, this is just one way to add a little more flavor with that mayo and mustard mix, a little bit of panko and parsley and lemon, and then you put it on top of these this bed of lentils. Oh my gosh, let's take a bite. And I love the crispiness of the skin that we seared. We still have it all cooked through. Oof, yeah, it's going to be a big bite. Again, you have the crunchiness on top. You have the gentleness in the middle, very tender meat. And then you have, it's almost like a sandwich of crunchiness, which is what I like. And then the lentils. Mm. They just melt in your mouth. And then that creme fraiche is like the, the butter, that silkiness. It brings it all together. And the carrots are soft and tender. Mm. Good. Now for dessert. While we wait for the apple tart to cook, I want to share with you guys something. The thing that, that what I love about this meal is that we're making apple tart. It's fall and it, there's something about cooking and baking with the seasons. And that has to do with knowing what vegetables as we talked about before and what fruits to use. But I had the opportunity this summer to go to the largest vegetable garden or potager um, in France, and it was at Villandry Chateau. 
and I would love to share share a video that I have made with you um, during my time there. And it's interesting to note that they plant the garden two different times throughout the year. They have the early spring um, through early summer, and they plant it again um, around May, June for the late June into October um, season. So we're in the second season. There'll be a link on the show notes for you to check out more, but take a look at this video of Le Jardin de Villandry. some buttery a little bit of sweet sugar in there for the sweet tart part it's got the apples it's got a little bit of sugar but we're not done yet look what we're gonna do so let's cut it up first and this could really be for four people but I usually make sure that I have a second slice for myself if I really want one <laughs> What I like to do, this is, this is instead of topping it with anything else right now, um, what I like to do is top it with a local gelato, dolce de leche. It has a little bit of caramel and vanilla and that saltiness. Oh yeah. One little dollop is all you need. Oh, so good. All right, let's have a bite of this. Whew, it's melting right on top. Get the crust, the apples, mm, cool and hot. 
together. still buttery which is what made it hard to roll out I had to put a little bit more butter than I normally do but I knew it would still taste great and it actually tastes better and that's why that laying it out flat is the best thing to do when you're not gonna have to shape it and that apple the, the little bit of tartness and then the butteriness of the of that ice cream or that gelato oh my goodness hopefully what you've seen today is a way for you to in 45 minutes or less is what this meal would take you get your lentils started well, the lentils are going, you're making your salmon, the tart dough, you can make the day before, you can have it in the fridge for two days, three days if you want. You could roll that out, have that into the oven as soon as that salmon comes out. And as you're eating dinner, this is cooking so that as soon as you're done with dinner, this is going to come out nice and hot. You put that cold ice cream on, pour yourself a hot cup of tea. I need to have a cup of tea. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this meal as much as I have. I'm going to go enjoy it because I'm starving. And I hope you enjoy your food, enjoy your day, and enjoy stepping into your kitchen.